Hello, this is Ash from Crack Manny's. Um, today I'm going to be doing some Turnip 28. I've been seeing it popping up on uh, the YouTubers' channels and I thought I want to have a try at that. Uh, and I went with a tall man. Tall man is any place of execution, including a wicker man, a guillotine, a cauldron of soup, a pit. So naturally I chose the most unsettling option and decided to do a wicker man. The base for a tall man's between 100 and 160 millimetres. I decided to go for 120, so it wasn't too big, um, but not small enough that I couldn't get a lot on it. I decided to make the whole thing out of wood as well, just to give myself more of a challenge. To be fair, it worked because I got this thing done in about four days. I want to apologise for this bit coming up. It's the uh, only basic material I had to hand, and uh, well, you'll see. I made a skeleton from old paintbrushes I had lying around and then I used cork around the bottoms of the legs to, just so they wouldn't snap straight off the base because they're, they're very delicate hold on them, even with the super glue. Once I had the cork on the base, I pulled out my matches and started gluing them on. While I do that, I may as well tell you about Turnip 28, or at, or at the very least what I've learned over the last few weeks while I've been researching it before I started deciding whether I wanted to do an actual build on it. I can't really do a better job than what's in the book of introducing it, so I'm going to read the first paragraph. Churned mud and swampland stretches out into the gloom. Thick fog hangs heavy in the air. Rolling barrows loom out of the murk. A strange root writhes underfoot. A thousand years after the defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of Austerlitz, the world has fallen into decay. Endless war has led to technology stagnating, and beautiful countrysides have been ground to a thick ruin under the boots of a million dead men. Now nothing grows, a bizarre and horrible root covers the land, strangling the life from the trees, poisoning the water and filling the sky with an arid mist. Humanity barely endures by harvesting this disgusting tuber. It twists their bodies and minds, infesting their thoughts with divine visions of lost vegetables. Bizarre religious orders have formed. They stockpile abandoned weapons unearthed by the twisting roots, marching in column under fluttering banners, brandishing mud-clogged muskets and rusted bayonets. They are cruel parodies of long-forgotten armies on the march. Sounds cool, doesn't it? Well, at least I think it does. It's, uh, so, 228 is 28mm tabletop game with a Napoleonic setting and it's perfect if you enjoy kit bashing. From what I've worked out so far, uh, to play a game of Turnip 28 you need a boss and two lieutenants, they're called snobs and toffs. The, the boss or snob, he has two units and the toffs have a unit, unit each and that's basically all you need to play. So the units come in a variety of different types and that I'll probably explore more as I go on building because I've basically, as soon as I finish this one, I've realised I need an army. So I'm going to be building the whole thing. And you're probably going to see me build all of it. What I'm building currently, the Wicker Man or Tall Man rather, is a special unit. Now, the special units are part of cults. There's like a, so you have your basic army, then you can have a cult that you join, and that has a special unit in it. There's a bunch of different cults, all the different levels of ease to slowly work your way up as you play the game more and more and learn the rules more and more. Right, each cult has special rules as well. Like there's the Slug's Lament, and it's got one bristling. In addition to their normal weapons, snobs belonging to the Slug's Lament must be equipped with mustaches. While fetching moustaches sadly conferred no benefit and are for appearance only. <laughs> yeah, and there's another cult called Todd's Folly. And this one, basically, your regiment decides that they don't want to follow the Toff anymore and they make Todd their boss. So, uh, yeah, and Todd's this little half frog man. It's, from what I can tell in the rules, is just mad as a bag of cats. And the special ability for that cult is like misplaced confidence. If you win, you lose, and if you lose, you win. And that comes to shooting engagements and uh, melee bounce. And speaking of melee, when you have your toff gets too close to your enemy's toff, they get put to one side, and they basically have what's called a toff off, which is like a slobber knocker. You just roll dice and attack for melee to see who wins. Oh, and uh, I wanted to say something. 
uh, thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. Uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, I do like to say this at every video, probably, but I feel like I've, I'm improving again every time, just a little bit. Uh, managed to sort out the camera shake. It was the table that I had it on, wobbly leg. And uh, yeah, hopefully the audio in this one will be a bit better for you. I uh, tweaked it a bit. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching this for the first time. Uh, I do normally do a story. I don't think I'm going to be doing it in this one. Uh, you'll probably find out a little bit later on if I do or not. I haven't decided yet. And I'm going to have to make it up on the fly. I don't normally make my videos this quick. What tends to happen is because it takes me quite a while to finish a build. I start building it. have a basic shape formed. And then I start crafting the story around what I've built. Uh, sometimes I do drawings and things like that. As well, which helps me, you know, generate ideas. This one I did do the drawing, but I basically did the drawing and then just started building the thing. So <coughs> I haven't had a chance to work out what I'd want to say if I was going to say it. We'll see. I should be on the head bit now. Uh, as you saw a little bit earlier on, I had to use a 3D printed barrel to get the shape that I wanted right. It was an absolute nightmare trying to just build it as is so I didn't include that in there I just showed you me sticking the barrel on the neck and then wrapping the head in little bits of sticks I felt like I was cheating a little bit using it you know because I wanted to make the thing completely out of wood but at the end of the day I wouldn't have got the effect that I did get if I hadn't used a bit of plastic so once the head was finished I uh, decided that I needed some binding something to make it look like it was all tied together and I settled on using some string and I uh, soaked that in Mod Podge and water mixture I made it a little bit thin so it was still super absorbent after it dried which is a bit of a nightmare when it comes to painting it but I was really happy with the way it looked in the end you know what yeah I'm gonna do story let's see how it goes <laughs> 500 days ago, when the king told me I was going on an expedition, I was so happy. I thought that I could be the one to discover what had caused this blight upon the land. It was a fool's errand. We are starving, hungry, so far from home. We have been lucky though. We stumbled across a small village with a large church. There was a preacher. He offered us sustenance in exchange for captured prisoners. We took the deal and the villagers began erecting a large structure. Ten times the size of any man, also human in shape, although a twisted version. He was hollow inside. They refer to it as the tall man. They placed the prisoners inside the body of the beast and set it alight. I fear the sustenance they have promised us will be the prisoners that we have given them. I didn't tell the men their spirits would be broken. I do hope, though, I do not find a fingernail in my soup. Hope you liked that. Uh, didn't feel like I did too bad considering I made it up on the fly. Uh, <sighs> I normally do that at the painting bit, but the painting bit in this is quite short. Uh, we're having some lovely weather in Wales at the moment. It's too cold to be using rattle guns like I normally would, so I've had to switch to the airbrush. To be fair, using the airbrush can be a lot quicker, and this time, definitely, it was a lot quicker. Uh, first thing I did was a base coat of it black. Then I uh, sprayed on some yellows, uh, lighter browns, and then 
going up to darker browns to give the wood like a variance in colour. Not that it mattered much after I did the wash, which was quite heavy and made everything darker, but if I hadn't had that original tone, it would have just been a really like yellowy black mess. Um, before I said it was a nightmare painting the string, and it was a nightmare. It just kept absorbing all the wash, after wash, after wash. Uh, it took, I think it was like four coats before it finally had the colour that I wanted it to have. Which is this nice yellowy, that like a dark yellowy colour. I think what caused it is that the Mod Podge water mix was a bit thin. Yeah, I think next time if I do it again, I'm going to be making that a bit thicker. Either that or I'll layer it on and then just soak it in super glue. And hopefully that'll keep the shape and make it less absorbent. Then finally I did some dry brushing. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Uh, time for the spinny bit. <laughs>